Did you see this? Verse 4. Those indeed then who are dispersed pass through evangelizing with the word. Now what's going on here? Okay, so just a few months ago, Christ rose from the dead, presented himself alive to the disciples with many proofs, and this changed everything. He returned back to the Father. He promised them the Holy Spirit. They went back to the upper room and hung around until they got this Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues. They healed the sick. Uh, the building shook. I mean, there was all kinds of miracles, including Ananias and Sapphira dropping dead. Their numbers increased wildly. The Pharisees got pissed off that they were losing control of the city, or at least by all appearances that they thought they were losing control. So they orchestrated the assassination of Stephen, one of the main speakers. Saul was in on it. He was the hat check boy at the assassination of Stephen. And now here in verse 3 it says Saul went on, not just being a hat check boy, but he went on to devastate the ecclesia, going into their homes, dragging out the brothers and sisters, and he gave them over to jail. It was a terrifying thing. These guys had to, the disciples had to disappear in the middle of the night or else face terrible consequences from the law because what they were doing was apparently breaking the law. They were excited about the resurrection of Christ. Now, verse 4. They dispersed, these indeed who are dispersed, chased out of the town. They passed through, and were they moaning and complaining and bitching uh, that they had lost their property, that they had lost their homes, that they had lost their businesses, that they had lost relationships? Were they bitching about all that stuff? No, they were excited. They were evangelizing with the word. Why would they be so excited? I mean, don't they know about the American dream? Maybe they would call it the Jerusalem dream at the time, 2,000 years ago, because there was no American dream. But everybody has a dream of owning more and more property, right? These guys apparently got rid of that dream. They let it go. They knew there was something more valuable than possessions. They had to hightail it out of there and become expatriates. Evangelizing with the word. Do you know what the word evangelizing means? It means something about good news, right? So they didn't hit the next town and complain Oh, I just lost all my property. I lost my wife, my husband, my business. I don't know where my adult children are. Will they? I, um, they were evangelizing with the word. They were excited about something, and it, what the word? The only thing they could be excited about is the resurrection of Christ. This is the whole purpose of our calling is to see that this changes everything. That the resurrection of Christ changes everything. If we turn over to 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 28, just eight little verses, it is the greatest prophecy in all of the Bible. It is the prophecy that as a result of Christ rising from the dead, the very last thing that God will clean up in his creative little effort with this universe is he's going to dispense with death altogether. So we could say easily that the resurrection of the Christ is a down payment on an option to abolish death for all. Verse 4, those indeed who are dispersed pass through evangelizing with the word. They didn't evangelize with a list of do's and don'ts that you must become Jews of the highest order. No, this is something new. 
they already knew the whole area knew about how to be good Jew of the highest order keep the law don't commit adultery don't steal they already knew that stuff but this is something new they were evangelizing with the word of Jesus death burial and resurrection this is something new and they were excited about it they didn't complain at all about being kicked out of their homes and having to dis disappear in the middle of the night I'm telling you there's more to this story of our lives than just the possessions we have or don't have we are participating in a grand scheme much bigger than anything we initially thought or realized. This thing is about the completion of the eons. This thing is about the purpose of God in carrying out His blessings and graciousness to the whole universe. These guys who were dispersed passed through evangelizing with the word. They weren't pity partying. They were excited about something. You tell me what they were excited about. It didn't say they were bitching. They were excited about something. And the only thing I can see here, using my little brain, is they were excited about the resurrection of Christ and what it might mean for everyone both backwards into the ancient past and forwards into the far future. This changes everything. The abolition of death, which began with Christ. Oh, it is our hope and our expectation that it will engulf all humanity and it will affect all creation because Christ died and it means something. Okay, when next we meet, we'll talk about some actual experiences of those who had to disperse. And this first guy is, is Philip, coming down into Samaria, heralding Christ to them. Verse five, that's where we'll start next time. And uh, go ahead and like and leave some comments and share this with somebody. And uh, because it seems to help in the algorithms. If you like this thing, leave a comment and tell me about the weather in your town or <laughs> about how you're excited about what the resurrection of Christ might mean to the whole of humanity. Not just to you, because this is not a personalized gospel. This is a gospel that includes the whole universe. That's why we're excited about it. That's why we can be just like these first century saints who got beat up and kicked out of their town and not be uh, upset with losing everything because we've got a bigger vision ahead of us. Something that was accomplished that's greater than what we can accomplish with our own individual efforts. Anyway, leave, leave some comments and let me know what, <laughs> what you're getting out of this thing. And grace to you. I, I'm I'm kind of excited about where this is going because aren't you glad we're out of chapter 7? Boy, that was a long chapter. But I kind of miss it at the same time because it was a lot of good stuff in chapter 7. But now we're in chapter 8 where Paul has devastated the Ecclesia. And boy, is he in for a big surprise. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I say Paul? It was Saul who devastated the Ecclesia. He will become Paul. He will join this merry band of evangelizers. But for right now, he can't see it. He just wants to lay the sword to these guys. And he's a total asshole. Anyway, Phariseeism will do that to you. <laughs> Grace to you. We'll talk later.